Live from Buenos Aires, it's the obstacle course of the week. And tonight, it's a celebrity showdown. Ten famous faces, including an award-winning actress, a pair of Olympic legends, and a state-of-the-art Eurovision champion will go head-to-head -head with an array of obstacles, all in the name of charity. So let's roll out the red carpet, pop open the champagne, and let Celebrity Total Wipeout begin. Yes, it's Celebrity Total Wipeout time once again. And you can tell that we are in the presence of showbiz legends because I've got my special showbiz shirt on. There's this. And for the first time this series, Amanda Byram is wearing a clean pair of pants. But whilst Amanda and I will be giving today's competitors the celebrity treatment, the Total Wipeout course will not. That's because the laws of gravity and wetness even apply to famous people. Here's what they're going to be up against. The Qualifier, a once-in-a-lifetime adventure experience. Crash Mountain, fun for all the family. And the 16's not allowed. Dizzy Dummies, it's a bottom-of-the-range spin drive. The Wipeout Zone, an all-expenses-paid trip across one of Argentina's most breathtaking landscapes. Minibar not included. Today, all of the celebrities will be attempting the Qualifier and Crash Mountain before the eliminations begin, which means double trouble for them, and double funny for us, probably. Today's winner will be crowned the fourth Celebrity Total Wipeout Champion, following in the famous footsteps of that guy who was in Holby or something, that woman, what's her name, and Dame Judi Dench. They'll also earn ten grand for the charity of their choice. Let's reveal this week's star-studded lineup. Oh look, it's Eurovision winning national treasure Cheryl Baker. That's Olympic legend John Regis MBE. That's D David Bowie? No, it can't be. Yeah. It's actor and TV presenter Jeremy Edwards. That's award winning actress Margie Clark. There's 2001's fastest woman across 400 metres, Catherine Merrill. Now these two come as a pair. It's DJs and presenters JK and Joel. Now, star of EastEnders, actress Nina Toussaint White is next. And that's TV presenter Sarah Kaywood. Finally, comedian presenter and now obstacle course doer, it's Roland Rivron. So the course is ready. The celebrities are in place and, as their agents requested, the bottles of imported mineral water have been chilled to precisely three degrees Celsius. But now it's time to welcome the biggest diva of them all. Down at the course, it's Amanda Byron. First celebrity to take on the course is one of Liverpool's favourite daughters, star of Letter to Brezhnev and Coronation Street, it's Margie Clark. So now, Marg, do you think you have what it takes to get through the Total Wipeout course? Well, I think the best way to do it is leg it, just leg it over everything. And if that doesn't work, I've got to use my secret tactic, that levitation. She, she can't really levitate, can she? Yeah, she can as well. Kill. Yeah, well, not over the hill so much as down the slide. No! Uh, yeah, neither legging it nor levitating there, just, just sort of falling over, really, but... She's a feisty, pink-haired nugget. That's never been said before, ever. Certainly an original description. I like it, Amanda. Right, Pink Nugget Margie heads towards the first obstacle of the day. From the people who brought you Las Traplonkas, we proudly introduce All-Star Las Traplonkas. The same game, but with added fame. It's a must-have accessory for every VIP party girl. But remember, if you're not famous, you're not actually allowed to play. Being famous has never been so much fun. All-star Las Traplonkas in celebrity toy shops near you now. Probably. So, will Margie be our first celebrity Traplonka of the day? Here we go. Yo oh! oh! Oh, hang on! No, not that time. Come on, the pink nugget. Come on. Brilliant, she's done the first. Can she do the double? No. Margie misses the trapeze and the pink nugget becomes a sort of brown tinged nugget. It's all gone wrong. Margie did play a female boxer in the film Blonde Fist, so the Sucker Punch may well have made its celebrity match here. Looking good. It is looking... And she's done it! Easy! Maybe so, Amanda, but look what's coming up next. 
the pink-haired lady from Liverpool approaches the big balls. She's going to show these balls what for. The motivator lurks above. Margie jumps first ball, <laughs> kind of second ball, and then, then water. I hope that pink hair dye is waterproof. What really is that colour? Margie's somehow finding the time for a leisurely paddle. Come on, girl, get a move on. The final obstacle is waiting for you. Now it's time for the celebrity cradles of doom. They're back and they're on a mission. Like an angry TV critic, this monster is determined to send celebrities plummeting to their doom. One little mistake crossing the pendulums is all it takes to send the celebrities screaming into the murky depths of Zedlist land. That's, that's the water to like you and me. Let's see if Scouse legend Margie can get across there with her dignity and her celebrity status still intact. She moves up. She's onto the first cradle. Remember, the faster she completes the qualifier, the more points she'll get. Yes. Come on, Margie. Come on. Oh, oh no. No, she's doomed. Oh. So fairy, cross the mercy. That's all it takes. In celebrity life, doomed to a life of supermarket openings and Channel 5 chat shows from here on. Ah, well. Margie finally finishes the qualifier in 3 minutes 56. Well done, Pink Nugget. Not a bad effort after all, actually. Tell you what, you are one feisty little pink haired mama. That was pretty unbelievable. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. You want to have a go yourself? Mm, no, I don't. Next to attempt the qualifier, it's everyone's favourite superstar pop duo, Jedward. This is a great booking. Time for some real chart topping talent. I'm so pleased. It's not them, is it? No, my mistake. It's not Jedward, it's Jeremy Edwards with bad hair. That's disappointing. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm incredibly excited. I I'm, I'm ridiculously excited. I can't wait to get going. My main thing is to try and get over those balls, of course. Think of the stories you can tell when you get home, you know, really macho, manly. If I make it across those balls, then I'm done. Go out there and do well for me. OK, OK, thanks. <laughs> yeah, go on. Look, he can actually dance. Definitely not Jedward, then. That seals it. This course doesn't scare me! Right, surf's up! And surf's down! Oh dear! A valiant attempt at surfing down the slide. Valiant but funny for us, and that matters more. Now, amongst his irritations on this form here, Jeremy lists cockroaches and Richard Hammond's teenager haircut. Really? Is that so? Don't worry, I'm mature enough to deal with that kind of playground taunting. Face, Jeremy Edwards, teenager haircut coming right back at you. As far as celebrity triplonkers go, though, I think Jeremy Edwards wears the crown. That was quite spectacular. Come on, Jeremy. Time for heartthrob Jeremy to take on the sucker punch wall. Don't hurt his face, his agent will kill us. Oh, he's off. Is his face okay? Oh, thank goodness for that. It was a shoulder blow. <laughs> face intact. Look, Jeremy can do struggling really well. He should put this into his showreel. He probably won't, will he? No, he won't. OK, this is it. Can Jeremy make it to the big time? Hollywood is calling, Jeremy. Don't do anything crazy now. Je oh, 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 disappointing. Yeah, definitely more Hollyoaks than Hollywood. Forget the chat shows, cancel the American tour. In fact, just get Holby City back on the blower right now, Jeremy. Ah. He won't get onto an American talk show, but if he clears the cradles, Jeremy might just make it into the one show. And that's big news. Oh, and he's done it in two minutes, four seconds. Oh, like a dream. Yeah, not a bad time for someone who knows nothing about hair. Don't listen to him, Richard. You look great. You look like Zac Efron. So, eight more celebrities to go. And not a bruised limb, angry agent or superstar tantrum in sight. Yet. Now, over the years, history has provided us with some great partnerships. Sonny and Cher, Little and Large, Hammond and Byron. I've never actually met her. Here on Total Wipeout, we like to pay homage to great double acts too. So we now bring you kids TV presenters and radio DJs extraordinaire, JK and Joel. 
Okay, that's JK on the left. And that's Joel, who's two years, three inches and ten kilos greater than his on-screen counterpart. My money's on the big one. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Which one of you is the fitter one? Um, I'd have to go for JK, definitely. Yeah. Uh, there's a real fine line between confident and arrogance. And you, <laughs> you've got to work out which one it is. Um, yes, I am very confident when it comes to stuff like this. I am a little bit more, let's say, energetic. I've been in secret training, which I don't really want to talk about, whereas JK's been down the gym. Come on, give me a clue. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. No, 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 no. Don't do that. It's nothing like that. No. Body strength is really good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so look, at, look, at, look at that muscle. Good luck out there. May the best... Man win. I will. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Joel skids off. While JK kind of, kind of waddles. Oh, great jump though, and a really quick start. Encourage them, please. Look at him go. Right, JK's at the triplonks now. And yes. he's over. Second one. Oh, oh yes. amazing! JK is the first ever celebrity Traplonka! <laughs> He'll be proud. So, how can Joel outdo JK now? <laughs> oh, yes! Oh. Ouch! Yeah. But, but he's across the first. We could have our first ever pair of celebrity Traplonkas here. We could. This would be. Oh. Ow! Oh, oh no! Oh. Joel bit off more than he could chew there, resulting in a bruised ego and quite possibly a bruised behind to match. Ouch. The big balls will surely sort the men from the boys and the JKs from the Joels. Joel is up first, setting the benchmark for JK. Come on, big man. The nation watches. Come on. Come on. There, there, there he goes. He's off. Benchmark has been set at one ball. Can JK at least match that? Well, sure. OK, JK's a team. Here we go. One, two. Ooh, he's already beaten Joel. Three. Could he go all the way? This is he's looking good. Oh, no, the four. No celebrity has ever made it across, ever. But JK has! He becomes the first famous person to defeat the big balls. No stopping to celebrate either. This man is on a mission. So JK's traversed the Traplonks. He beat the big balls. Can he now also conquer the Cradles of Doom? Wow, he's done it! And in 1 minute 28, even by civilian standards, that is an incredible time. Our belly flop there, that would have hurt. So how will Joel do? No pressure. Slides himself onto the second cradle. Crouches. Ready to pass. And he's there. Joel finishes in 3 minutes 15 seconds, almost 2 minutes behind JK. But I'm sure he'll be unselfishly thrilled for his friend and colleague. As soon as we go back to England, uh, he will be telling everybody, I got over the red balls. Every time he watches out on the BBC or whatever, he'll be going, oh, I've done that, I can do this, I can do that. So, ah, oh, so proud of him. Yeah. Next up, it's star of East Enders, actress Nina Toussaint-White. Nina trained at the world-famous Italia Conti Academy, and now it's time for her to take centre stage on the qualifier. Hey, what's happening now? It's showtime, Nina. There you go. Action! Nina made her professional debut on Casualty back in 2007. Let's hope she doesn't end up back there tonight in an impossibly ironic twist. First to plonk. Oh! Oh! Oh, that was dot cotton rotten. You see? Yeah. Sorry. Ouch. Sucker punch now. She's on. She's moving well. She's off. She's just off that. Right, big balls time. And especially for Nina, they're EastEnders themed. Yeah, you're right to be scared, Nina. Oi! Ow! Oh, right in Phil Mitchell's boat race. Great effort, but Nina ended up in the Wolford Canal. <laughs> She'll love all this when she watches it afterwards. She will. Oh. Nina, of course, no stranger to cliffhangers, so let's see how she gets on with this. Ah! Tune in to the next episode of Total Wipeout to find out. <laughs> no, only joking. <laughs> Carry on. 
There she goes. Nina finishes in 2 minutes 56. Surely she'll be happy with that. Look out for Nina and Crash Mountain. Definitely. I'm going to wipe them boys out. Hopefully. Time now for a quick look at the first celebrity leaderboard, where ball crossing JK sits proudly in the top spot. Jeremy Jedwards is second. Nina Toussaint White, third. JK's other half, Joel, is fourth, and Pink Nugget Margie is down in fifth place. So JK becomes the first celebrity to join the exclusive club of Big Ball Crossers, a club that's so VIP only he's allowed in it. And even he's not allowed in it in those trainers. Impressive, but not a patch on the next competitor's most famous achievement. Has JK ever won Eurovision and had his skirt ripped off on national TV? Yeah. Well, he definitely hasn't won Eurovision. Here's a lady who's done both of these things. It's Cheryl Baker. I may not be young and I may not be fast. I'll be trying to win, but I'll probably come last. I wanted to win. And she's off. She's in. Come on then, Cheryl. Uh-oh. Never mind, there's a pair of supermen right there. That's, that's handy. Yeah. Great what she's got going. Absolutely terrifying. Don't worry, Cheryl. Just like back in 81, the country is behind you. You can do this. Leave the skirt on, but you can do this. Oh. Oh, I see. Speed it up, slow it down. Speed it up, slow it down. Look. It's not working. That's my childhood hero, that. Oh, yeah. Yep, United Kingdom, no point. Come on, Cheryl. You're a real life record breaker. You've zipped down the world's longest rope slide, been part of the world's longest river dance. These big balls are surely just a walk in the park for a lady like you. Yeah. Deep breath. Yep. Ouch. I'd say that fall was more maybe back-breaking than, than record-breaking. Oh. Quick tortoise impression there. Hello. I'm really scared. I'm really scared. You've been so brave so far, Cheryl. She's only nice to some, isn't she? Come on, Cheryl, you can do this. First jump, she may be scared, but Cheryl Baker is no quitter. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no! No! Oh! No. No, that pesky gravity and go. Brave Cheryl finally finishes the course in just under 10 minutes. And she's still standing! Just. Oh, I am so proud of you. Do you know that? You literally did run out of fizz halfway through that, but you battled on, you kept on going and you did it. That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm so glad it's over. Oh. Isn't it? No, there's yeah, more, isn't yeah, there? It's comedian and TV presenter Roland Rivron, who's looking a little perplexed. Maybe his agent told him he'd been booked for Strictly Come Dancing. That would be a shock. How are you doing, Ron? I'm very good, yes. I'm wearing red, the international colour of danger. It's also the colour worn by all the characters in Star Trek who end up getting killed. So good luck with that, Roland. OK. Oh, oh, that's a cracking start. Oh, I have to say, I've never seen the pontoons done like that before. It's like watching a foal learning to walk, isn't it? <laughs> kind of... no. Roland's T-shirt is signalling the first real sign of danger. He jumps. Yes. No, he's going in the wrong direction. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, come on. that's more like it. Yes! The danger alert is going to overdrive now as Roland approaches the big balls. I can barely watch, but contractually I am obliged to. I signed a thing. Here we go. Oh, comedy gold. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me the excitations. And there he goes. More slap in the face than slapstick, but a brilliant effort nonetheless. Time now for the terrifying Cradles of Doom. No fear. No. All clue. 
His T-shirt doesn't seem to agree, though. Can Roland make the second cradle? Yes, he can. One last jump now. All to play for. Brilliantly yes. makes it finished in three minutes, 38. I'm totally shocked. Yes! Or no? Roland Rivron. Don't touch me. You are a little dark horse, aren't you? <sighs> I can't be for cash. That was the beast that is Roland Rivron. Now it's time for the beauty that is. TV presenter and former ballerina Sarah Kaywood. She's doing some ballet moves now. That's the um, half Nelson, and that's an up and under. No, I don't know anything about ballet, actually. I'm... No, that's another one. Sacrificing my dignity for light entertainment. Now let's watch this former ballerina. Bounce. And she's off. No, it's, not, it's not a water park, Sarah. But never mind, she's in. At least she's enjoying herself so far. Sarah was discovered when performing in Phantom of the Opera moves very similar to what's going on now. I don't want Ham and Big Saki about the fact that I'm about to go in the mud, but I am. What, me? No, as if. I mean, I'm... no. Oh, man alive! <laughs> I'm saying nothing. I'm really not. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Yeah. No. Don't provoke them. No, you wouldn't like them when they're angry. Time. Ah, told you so. Yeah, we did warn you. Sarah is no stranger to famous balls. She's a former presenter of the National Lottery Draw. Tonight we're using set of balls number four and machine bounce a lot, chosen by Eduardo from Buenos Aires. Drawmaster, release those balls. Oh, oh what? Oh, oh, she's still on. This, this is impressive. I should point out, that's ball number two, and that's its 23rd appearance in the show so far. This is looking very promising. Oh, she, she's on! That's ball number three. An old favourite, 47 appearances this year already. This is looking very good. Can she...? Yes, ball four! Incredible, I can't believe this. Sarah Kaywood might be about to defeat the balls too. Is four going to be Sarah's lucky number? I don't... No, she has! That's two celebrities in one show clear the balls. I mean, are we are we sure they're, they're definitely celebrities, not like real people or something sneaking in? Okay, that is amazing. Cradles of Doom now. Can Sarah continue her winning streak? Well, that is a great start. Just take it out, yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. On to the second now. This is looking very good. Oh, I'm so close. Come on, finish it, finish it. And Sarah about to fall in the water. No, you're not. Come on. And splat! She's done it! Did I just do that? Yes, you did! I think you'll find I did! You did! In four minutes, two seconds. Thank you! No, thank you, please! I made it over the ball. Not delicately and not gracefully and not with aplomb, but that's not what counts. What counts is making it over the ball. So, Sarah Kaywood joins JK in the Celebrity Ball Beating Club. Giving them both super legendary status, just like the next two famous contenders. In lane one, it's Olympic bronze medalist Catherine Merry. And in lane two, it's Olympic gold winning legend John Regis MBE, aka The Tank. You ate all the pies, eh? <laughs> I'm being serious here, what's going on? <laughs> Can you get us both in, yeah? <laughs> what do you make of our uh, John Regis's chances? John's older than me, his age will catch him out today and his, his weight as well. By the time the man blows the whistle, she'll have pulled a hamstring. Game over. <laughs> so I could take it that you're not at all intimidated by the other Olympian in the uh, competition today? What's her name again? Okay, it's time for the biggest Olympic battle since, well, the last Olympics. John Regis, <clears throat> come on! That's fighting words from Catherine Mary. <laughs> In 2001, Catherine was the world's fastest woman across 400 metres. So don't blink, else you might miss her. Her running style a bit more wobbly than I remember. She didn't look like this before. No. She's adapting. First triplonk, and she's making good time. Second triplonk, and... Oh, almost. No, back she goes. Oh. There we go, and she's... Oh, oops. Yeah, well, onto the sucker punch. 
Oh, takes an early hit, but she's holding on. Heads! Heads! Tails! Uh, better luck on the big balls, maybe. Ooh. Right, she's down again. Come on, Catherine, don't show John any weakness. It is time to shine. Here we go. First ball. Second. No, no, not the third. <laughs> Look, it's really difficult, OK? Final obstacle. And that's a very neat landing onto the first cradle. Ooh, belly flop onto the second. There could be some high points available here if Catherine makes this final jump. And she's done it in two minutes, 16. Look at that. That there is the face of a champion. Right there, lying down. OK, let's see how John does. This is Sparta! OK, under starter's orders, and he's off. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, if this was Sparta, you'd have been left behind for being a bit clumsy. Yeah, that's quite a delicate little run going on as well. Come on, John, time to man up for the Traplonks. Yeah. Oh. oh, he flies through the air with the greatest of ease and lands with, with, with some difficulty, but he does land. One more traplonk to go. Yes, complete the pair. Here we go. Oh. OK, can the Man Mountain scale the Sucker Punch wall? Oh. Well, the Sucker Punch is on good form. Sadly, you know, maybe John's not good. No time to wallow, though. It's on to the big balls. Oh, champion. Olympian. Oh, look at that. Wow! And it's graceful athletic moves like this that make me think the big balls should be in the 2012 Olympic Games. We're going to meeting somewhere and prove it. Right, time for that sprint finish I mentioned earlier. No, not, not quite the sprint I was looking for. Bit of a slip. But here we go. Balance achieved. Smooth. Not, not so smooth. Luckily for John, the 200 metres isn't held on top of 40-foot foam obstacles. Because if they were, he'd have been rubbish at it. So John clambers to the finish line with a time of 3 minutes and 6 seconds. And the tank that is John Regis was beaten by Catherine Merry by a full 50 seconds. How will he take the news? News! It's all the extra weight, son. Oh. oh! Well, the next game, I shall come back. Is he in it? <laughs> well, I think I'm in the next game. Yes, you are, John. Everybody is. You obviously didn't read the welcome pack we gave you. As today's competitors are celebrities, they all get special treatment. If you want a definition of celebrity, please press the red button now. Which means they all go through to Crash Mountain, and they're all still in with a chance of trousering that ten grand prize for a charity of their choice. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. JK is top of the class with ten points. Jeremy Jedwards is second with nine. Catherine Merry's in bronze position. Nina's fourth, John Regis is fifth, Joel is sixth, Roland is seventh, Pink Nugget Margie eighth, Ball Queen Sarah Kaywood is ninth, and last, but by no means least, it's Cheryl Baker. Time now for the showbiz event of the Novelty Assault Course year. The Oscars of Obstacles, the BAFTAs of Bruises, the TV Quick Awards of... Um, anyway, it's Crash Mountain. The aim of the game is simple. Celebrities must step onto the red carpet arm and strut their way to the central podium, avoiding the wrath of the brutal sweeping paparazzi arms as they go. First across gets a maximum 10 points, second over gets 9 points, and so on. The players' scores will then be added to their points from the qualifier, and the five highest scoring celebrities will progress to dizzy dummies. The losers will be immediately forgotten. So, here are the nominees. On podiums one and two, it's ball queen Sarah Kaywood. Well, I conquered the ball so clearly, it's all about being small and bouncy. And Jeremy Jedwards. This game doesn't scare me, it's just like a big clock, and I eat big clocks for breakfast. <laughs> on podium three, it's dangerous Roland River. This game really does scare me, and we might see what I have for breakfast in a minute. Oh. And on four and five, it's Nina Toussaint White. I may have come fourth last time, but I'm still in it to win it! Come on! And Cheryl Baker. 
I may have come last in the qualifier, but guess what? This time I'm coming second to last. On podium six, it's Pink Nugget Margie Clark. I survived the sucker punch, so bring it on, kidders! On seven and eight, it's Ball King JK. After the last round, Joel's got a brand new motto. It's ready, steady, splash. And John Regis. In the last game, I was a gentleman and let Catherine just beat me. But not in this game! On podium nine, it's Joel. There is only one winner in this JK and Joel team. And you're looking at him over there. And on ten, it's Catherine Merry. I destroyed Johnny I'm Not Fit and Fat Regis in the last game by nearly one minute. For your entertainment and mine, I'm going to do it again. Mm. So without further ado, let's rejoin Amanda Byram and get this show on the road. Break a leg, everyone. Bow. No, not, not everyone. We've got a show to do. It's tough at the top, as these celebrities know, but not as tough as the top of Crash Mountain. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, that was one yes. Going. That means yes. Three, two, one. And they're off. Jeremy makes an early break for it and almost breaks his nose on the base of Crash Mountain. Ouch! JK now, having a go. Ducking. No! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Standing up at precisely the wrong moment. JK tried to hurdle the sweeper arm, something no one has ever managed to successfully do, ever. Nina sees her chance, then sees the water really close up. It's JK's mate Joel now, with a little too much spring in his step. Yeah, he may have failed, but at least he's taken it on the chin. Jeremy goes again and falls off again. No one's getting even close to that centre. But we spoke too soon, JK was very close. Sarah Kaywood, poised for action. <laughs> Supportive, comforting and caring laughter from Amanda Byron. She was shrieking, actually shrieking. Catherine Merry now, and she's off. <laughs> Roland Riveron gives it a go, he's on. He's up on his feet, and he's bottled it. Didn't expect that. Okay, Jeremy Mark three. And another close look at the base of Crash Mountain. If only that arm weren't rotating, then Crash Mountain would be much easier. Yeah, well. Yeah. JK's on the run again and makes it! Just a straight sprint. That is how to do Crash Mountain. JK was fastest in the qualifier and now first onto the mountain. That's another 10 points and a guaranteed spot in the next round. Who's gonna join him? Pressure's on now, Joel. Joel thinking about it. Doesn't want to be left out. Instead, he's wiped out. Oh, that's touching. Joel gives the arm a big hug. Slightly soggy, big hug. Catherine Merry's seen an opening and... Oh, so close! EastEnders star Nina having another go. She's ducking. She's screaming. And she's falling off. Just sort of froze there. Completely forgot to move forwards and instead just got brushed aside by the sweeper arm. So, JK is still the only celebrity to conquer Crash Mountain so far. John Regis now having a go. Tidal wave. This is Nina now. Staying low. She's up. And oh, oh no! Sweet Brahms got her again. Honestly, it's like somebody designed this thing to be difficult. Still, lots of points up for grabs here. Plus, JK is getting lonely in the middle. So. Is Cheryl still with us? Yes, there she is. Catherine Merry makes her merry way all the way to the centre. Catherine gets nine points and a big hug from JK. Margie Clark comes out of nowhere. Ducks, she needs those points. Nope, she doesn't need that though. Sarah Kay would now. Oh, double rollover. Okay, Joel again. I recognise those shorts anywhere. Eight points up for grabs here. Can he claim them? He's up, he's moving, and he's done it! Gets a cheeky little smack from Catherine, too. Maybe she was winding him. Jeremy on. He's running, and he makes it! Brilliant effort. Seven points in the bag for Jeremy. Oh, and John Regis is there for six points, too. 
So the remaining five are Cheryl, Nina, Margie, Roland and Sarah. Who will be next to make it across if anyone? Nina's going for it. She's up. She's wobbling. And oh, she's done it. And that is the noise of someone much better than me at maths declaring the game is over. It's now mathematically impossible for the others to qualify for dizzy dummies, apparently. Let's take a look at that final leaderboard. JK is king of the course with a perfect 20 points. In second place, it's Catherine Merry. Jeremy Jedwards is third. Joel's down but not out in fourth. And Nina's nifty dash over the qualifier bags her that final fifth place. So that means it's goodbye to John Regis, who's now sixth. Leaving the competition with him are Roland Rivron, Margie Clark, Sarah Kaywood and Cheryl Baker. Well, that was well scary. My inners were on my outers. My outers were on my inners. I think I proved to women of my own age that we still got the life force coursing through our veins. It's much harder than it looks. I didn't even get knocked off by one of the moving arms. That's how rubbish I was. Entertaining for you lot, though, I guess. Right? So much it was going too fast. I'm too old for this. It's a young man's game. It's a white knuckle sport. Is is total dishwash. I've been training so hard for this moment, and to take home one point from Total Wipeout, it's fantastic. The wind was blowing me a bit to the right, and every time I attempted to go forward, I didn't really cater for the wind. But don't worry, I will be back. Well, John, it's funny you should say that because Jeremy Edwards has picked up an injury and he's been advised to withdraw from the competition. That means having just said goodbye to John Regis, I now have to say hello, John Regis. Hello, John Regis. There you go. So for JK, Joel, Catherine, Nina and the newly reinstated John Regis, it's time to head for the dizzy heights of the dizzy dummies. Celebrities are busy people, so I'll make this explanation quick. Spin, 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 revolving goalpost, blob, bouncy, slip, finish. Last one's eliminated. Then it's spin, 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 revolving goalpost, crazy beams, whoa, and finish. Last one's eliminated again. Three left, wipeout zone, one winner, dinner, home, bed. Got it? Celebrity demands, you're about to hear one. Stop! It's time for Dizzy Dummies. Are you all ready? Yeah! Oh, let's spin them anyway. Three, two, one. As the spinning begins, time for a reminder of who's strapped into the poorly constructed wheel of misfortune. There's ball beating mountain slayer JK. Ready, steady, flat. Then there's him. There's one winner, and that winner is me. The one out of JK and Joel who isn't JK. It's Joel. Then there's him. <laughs> I think I'm in the next game. Olympic legend and Jeremy replacement, John Regis. She's got a quick wit and quick legs. You ate all the pies, eh? <laughs> it's Catherine Merry. And then there's her. The quiet one, Nina Toussaint White. And now the spinning stops, at least for us. Athletics legend Catherine is off, with a running style all of her own. Meanwhile, Olympian John is trying to get his bearings. Catherine's at the goalpost and she's through it, I think. Joel's stepping up. Joel's turn now. Catherine's scorching ahead. She's already onto the blob. And, and now she's already oh. off the blob. Oh no, you first. No, 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 you first. Oh no, you. Some rarely seen manners on the wipeout course, but much appreciated. Superstar DJ Joel takes the lead. Ooh, oh, yeah. One more jump from Joel and he is through to the next round of Dizzy Dummies. Uh, I said jump Joel, not make a bridge for JK. This is noble, a sacrifice. JK leapfrogs his DJ partner Joel, but now he's struggling as well. This is just a mess. Double dark, they're both in now. That means it's a swim all the way back to the start. John making slow and steady progress now. But can he pull himself up onto that slippy inflatable? Use them gumboats, John. Whatever, legs will probably come in handy too. 
stairs. And John's across, but from the loser's bench, he's now the first one safely two to Dizzy Dummy's round two. EastEnders actress Nina could be next. She's enjoying it, really. Just, yeah, Jake and Joel aren't, aren't really helping, though, it must be said. Here she goes. Oh, oh no, that was mean. Jake and Joel did a blob wobbling job on her there, resulting in an unwanted swim for Nina. Blob wobbler JK approaching the finish now. Almost there. And let's see, he's across. But what happened behind him? Two celebs off the blob at once. It was a double dunking. Okay, Catherine's turn now. Steadies herself. Yes, almost there. And she's done it. That means either Joel or Nina are about to be eliminated. It's DJ versus Actress. Oh no. Joel's at it again. More blob wobbling. And Nina's off again. Underhand tactics from Joel there. Yeah, you might look innocent, fella. We saw it. I mean, oof. And now Joel's off too. So it serves him right, children. Now, you see? Okay, Nina, focus. You can do this. Come on. Yes. Yes. Ooh, danger lurking behind the... Just that crucial dismount now. Concentrate, Joel is approaching. Yes! No! No! Yes! Come on, Nina, Joel looks defeated as Nina steadies herself for a final jump. Can she? Yes, she's there. And meanie man blob wobbler Joel is absorbed by the blob. Talk to me. There's a few people that are going to have a few words to say to you because you had this little technique of trying to bounce everybody off that big balloon. Well, obviously, as you can see, cheating does not work. And kids, it does not pay. Don't do it. OK, round two. Still in the game are two Olympians. What does that say about them? Well, they're fit and athletic and basically gluttons for punishment. Alongside Catherine and John are EastEnders actress Nina and DJ slash TV presenter JK. The machine comes to a standstill, but our celebrity heads don't. Catherine's first out again with her special walk. <laughs> Meanwhile, JK is doing his dog impression there. Catherine struggling on the spinner and she's making circles of her own. Catherine, Mary, go round anyone? She might have Olympic bronze for running, but right there, it's TV gold for her. <laughs> No dignity, just gone. JK scampers his way up. Meanwhile, Catherine and Nina are having a bit of a pile-up. JK scores an own goal, and Catherine still working out which way is... Oh, Catherine! So JK starts with a casual approach, and with no-one behind him, leaps onto the first beam. Gently does it. This crawling lark seems to be working for JK, but the next couple of jumps are going to be difficult. Here come John and Catherine. John makes it onto the first beam. Oh, Catherine hasn't. JK is almost home and dry now. This is a great run. Oh, yes! And JK's safe. JK leaps into the wipeout zone final. Going solo seems to be working out well for him. But don't tell Joel, obviously. John's taking it slow. He needs to get a wriggle on there. Catherine readies herself, aims, fires, and she's on. There'll be no third chances today, John. Hurry up. Come on. Come on, fast forward this baby and let's get you in the wipeout zone, Regis. Yeah, you tell him, Amanda. That's never been said anywhere else, eh? Oh, no, Nina's off again. Must be very tiring now. John finally goes for it. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> John Regis gets a dunking, and that means he has to go back to the start. So will Catherine now be second across and take the silver? Oh, Nina! Carefully does it now. That's it, Catherine, that's it. Oh, yes! We have a Catherine Mary in the final. Just one place left now. Will it be John or Nina's? Yes, she can. John inches from victory now. Come on, Nina. And, oh, no, she's off again. Oh, 
John so close, and now he's made it into the final. What a comeback! And spare a thought for poor Nina. Did you give up a little bit? Because yeah. that's not the name of the game. Oh. Get across, could I? Raring to go for the wipeout zone that you're not in. Are we good at cheering? Yeah. Yes, I'll do a bit of that. Right. Go get dried off. We'll see you later. Well done, babes. So Nina and Joel will be flying home losers. Just imagine how bad they must feel as they sip champagne in the first class cabin of their plane home. It's not easy being a celebrity. It's not easy booking a celebrity either. With those two out of the picture, it leaves TV presenter JK up against two of the UK's greatest ever athletes, John Regis and Catherine Merry. So good luck with that, JK. Total Wipeout is not athlete friendly or contestant friendly. It is by far one of the hardest things I've ever put myself through. This is for real hard physical, mental training individuals. To be in with two Olympic athletes is quite cool, and I'm up there with them. <laughs> I'm European champion, I'm world champion, I'm Commonwealth champion. I shall be gold medalist at the Total Wipeout Celebrity Challenge. I guarantee you that. The only goal I've had is to take the Olympic bronze medal I won and turn it into Total Wipeout gold. It's gonna happen. Being the first celebrity to make those four big balls has been brilliant. I'm happy with that, yeah. JK is the silent assassin. He would love to win it, as would I, as would John. John has fluked his way here. If it wasn't for Jeremy, then yeah, John wouldn't be here. Like Lazarus and the Phoenix, I'm back. Back to win. That's the only reason why I'm here. W-I-N, win! I'd like to beat the boys as much as I'd like to win the lottery every Saturday for the next 10 years. I want to win so much, and I do fancy my chances, yeah. Two Olympians, first and second, with some DJ fellow third. So, two record breakers versus one little fella who plays records. Not exactly a level playing field, but then the wipeout zone itself isn't a level playing field either, because of all the slopes and slides and things, it wouldn't work. Anyway, here's what's in store. Today's three finalists will have their work cut out as they battle against this watery beast. It's the usual sliding, splashing, climbing, falling, sploshing, balancing, dashing, swinging, jumping and button pushing with a little bit of showbiz sparkle. Fastest celebrity wins. John Regis, Catherine Merry and JK from JK and Joel must now be really feeling the pressure. Well, maybe not John and Catherine so much. I imagine they're used to this kind of pressure, having competed in any number of Olympic and world-class athletic events. Poor JK. Anyway, time for today's final act, and it's time to sort out the Olympic champions from, well, JK. This is the stuff that sporting dreams are made of. Two Olympians and a disc jockey. It's the wipeout zone, and the first to run tonight is John. John Regis has won gold before, but tonight he's bidding for tin, the wipeout trophy. He's off. Oh. And now he's properly off. Oh dear. Disaster strikes early for John, but it looks like he's okay as he heads towards the rapid climb. Just a brief swim. Once John's pulled himself up onto the slope, he has just 10 seconds before a tidal wave comes crashing down. He's on, and those 10 seconds start now. Needs to be fast now, come on. Oh no, John slipped. Quick, get up there. Come on, John, sprint, use that strength. Quick, time's running out. Too late, here comes the wave. He's in the worst place for it. John grabs hold of the rail and he's still on. Balance beam now. Deafness more important than power here. And it looks like John's got both. Come on, John. It's crazy sweeper time. John was the 200 meters king, but that was running in a straight line. Not in the wobbly one with a giant sweeping arm in hot pursuit. Oh, second duck. Unusual technique, but John's still looking good. 
He's up and sprints for it now. Oh, but he's paused again. Seems like John being, if anything, a bit too cautious here. While he's doing a great job at staying out of the water, this is slowing down his run considerably. Come on, John. Get up and run. Final sprint and John's across. Ooh, close. Time to find out how good John's Tarzan impression is with the swing. Yeah, not, not great. No, best stick to sprinting. Yeah. John's grip on the rope just evaporated, resulting in his first real error of the night. But this is still a quick run from John. Up onto the turntable now for his final jump. Makes it. John crosses the finish line in 2 minutes 37. A bumpy start for John, slowed by the tidal wave and a lot of ducking on the crazy sweeper. But he set a good benchmark and is certainly in with a shout of winning that tin trophy. Come on out, you speedy sprint legend, you! That was absolutely brilliant. How are you feeling? That was a lot of fun. I'm just gutted I couldn't hold on to the rope. Absolutely gutted! Those big muscles oh. of yours, what happened? I need more bench. Need more bench press. <laughs> Yours is the time to beat. You know who's up next. Oh, yes. <laughs> My fellow Olympian, Catherine Mary. Let's see how she does. Thank you. One Olympian down, one to go. Catherine Mary prepares to take on the wipeout zone. Come on! On your marks. Get set. Go. Well, she stayed on the ring, which is more than John managed. And now she's in the water. Catherine begins her swim towards the rapid climb. <laughs> and drags herself up onto the slide. The 10 second countdown starts soon. So come on, Catherine. Come on, Catherine, go, go! Oh no, she's slipping. Oh, and she's down and back to square one. Come on, Catherine, hold on the side! And what's worse, here comes the tidal wave. Oh, this is gonna get messy. Catherine just swept away. She didn't stand a chance. Look how far away she is. Catherine, looking tired already. She hasn't even passed the first obstacle. I'm not moving! Come on, swim for it. She's up again. No tidal wave this time, so it should be easier. Although Catherine does look exhausted already. Onto the balance beam now. Catherine's challenge is all but over, but she won't know that yet. So she has to keep edging along that beam. She's cleared it. Okay, onto that crazy sweeper, and like a true Olympian, she's not letting that setback get to her. Waiting for the optimum moment to start the dash. Ooh, good duck. Catherine staying low, working well so far. But she'll have to adapt this technique if she's going to traverse the podiums. Copying John's ducking technique here. And Catherine's assault begins now, skipping over them nicely. And oh, she's off, but she's holding on. Come on. Catherine, stay down, stay down. Good advice from John. No, <laughs> no. Catherine's still standing, though. And she's beaten the crazy sweeper. Yay! Okay, the Tarzan swing now. It's a big launch. Catherine's looking good. Yay! Yes. No. Oh! Disaster. Are you serious? Exhausted now. And Catherine Mary finally completes the wipeout zone in 5 minutes 48, which means John remains in pole position. Things went from bad to worse for Catherine, but a run of Olympian bravery nevertheless. Catherine doesn't know how well John did, so it's time for Amanda to break the news. How are you doing? Um, that wasn't an easy ride no, for you, was it? You're saying I was slow. It's a very scary course, but I enjoyed it immensely. I'm so pleased with myself. Catherine, I know you said that you were coming out of retirement for one night only, and I'm afraid it is one night only because you weren't quick enough. John was quicker. Well played, well played. Good job. Wicked. Good Cheers, John. You know what this means. Yours is the time to beat. You're an Olympian, and he's a disc jockey. Yeah, no, he, he shouldn't win, should he? He, sh he shouldn't win, ladies and gentlemen. He shouldn't win. Let's have a look. Okay. Come on. Well, he definitely shouldn't win on paper or on an obstacle course. Here's JK. Because the klaxon is away. 
Well, it is a great start. JK avoids doing a John and stays on the ring. He was the fastest in the qualifier and first onto Crash Mountain. How will he do here? Rapid climb first. Makes it to the base. He's got to climb on. Where's he gone? He's struggling. Ooh. Oh dear. Not looking good. Three, two, one. Tidal wave. JK clings on like his life depends on it. Come on, JK. Ooh, he's still on. He's still on. That took some real staying power from JK. Now he's up the slope without a care. JK onto the balance beam, like John using the wall to prop himself up. This is very close. He's across. Crazy sweeper now. John was cautious here. JK will need to be a bit bolder if he's going to beat John's benchmark. Will he choose to run for it or duck? Ooh, he's running, he's running. A duck to allow the sweeping arm to pass over him, then he's off again. JK now skips over the podiums very quickly, and he's there. Oh, this is close now. If he gets on this, it's game over, I think. Remember, John fell on the Tarzan swing. Here goes JK. And, oh no, he's missed. Oh, John's still in with a chance here, then. This is to the way. I can't watch. I can't watch. There's only a few seconds in this now. If JK avoids errors here, the title is his. Two minutes 17, JK has won today's Celebrity Total Wipeout. Well, JK made a couple of errors, but he survived a tidal wave, smashed the crazy sweeper, and somehow defeated two Olympians. He doesn't know it yet, so it's down to Amanda to make his day. How are you feeling? Oh, a little bit tired. <laughs> I think I got the, uh, the full force of the wipeout wave. Listen, I, it's going to come as no surprise. John was absolutely brilliant tonight, and this is one of Britain's finest ever athletes that you have beaten tonight. You yeah. are the total wipeout champion! Yeah. Yeah. Well done, man! That's a shocker! Oh, that's a shocker! <laughs> <laughs> So, presenter and DJ JK, aka Jason King, wins the Total Wipeout Trophy and £10,000 for his chosen charity, Cash for Kids. He also wins the right to show off about the time he beat two Olympians. Though I suspect he'll spend more time bragging about how he beat Joel. Mostly, two Joel. That's it for today's Celebrity Total Wipeout. Time to finish this showbiz special with a bang. Not working. Never mind. From Amanda and me, it's goodbye. <laughs>